so let me show you a little bit around where we where we are we're on the east side of Ibiza and this is our garden some of it more organized than other parts but you know over here we've got a little bit of a, a rosemary and herb patch we'll be later on working with the thyme that's down here um, to make our tinctures got some lemongrass over here for salads lots of aloe vera over here we have our vegetable patch it's um Really a work in progress at the moment. We're working with lots of um, different plants that can put nitrogen into the soil, so we create a, a good topsoil. It's kind of like a work in progress, but we've got lots of salads, and uh, broccoli, celery. These are gorgeous. Got some melons coming up there. Hello. So we're here today with the amazing Bex, who is going to show us um, some really cool cocktails and how you actually make all the um, elements that go into them. Absolutely. For me, the thing I love about cocktail making is the pre-elaboration of stuff, making things myself, having having full control over the ingredients that I put into the cocktail. Amazing. Yeah. And so, and how have you come about making cocktails? Because you've got a bit of a journey of how you got there, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we moved to Ibiza some four years ago and I set up a business in fermented foods and uh, specialising in kimchi, sauerkraut, but kombucha and, uh, as well. And so then I was kind of looking for ways to make um, kombucha more marketable to a sort of more mainstream audience, thinking if I can mix that into cocktails and make it a more, you know, rather than using Coca-Cola or something, let's yeah. use a healthier, a healthier mixer and see what we can do with that. And that's kind of where it began. And then I journeyed into making my own ginger beer, making tapachi, making seasonal sodas, and um, have just continued since then. Um, I've got a history in herbology as well, so that started. Yeah, so that started to come through as well, where um, I brought in tinctures and making tinctures to, yeah, to just change the whole. But actually, the tinctures aren't changing the the, the flavour; it's actually changing the aroma. So it's working. Let's go inside. Uh, we are going to make a ginger bug. Um, basically, it's all you need is ginger, sugar, water, a jar and the cloth, cheesecloth, or I just use the dumb cloths um, to go over the top. Um, I start off the first day with 10 grams of ginger. Sorry, and just to go back to the bug, what yeah. is the bug essentially? Because is it something that's fermented, isn't it? Or... it? It works as a starter culture. So um. the, the sugar and the skin of the ginger attract wild yeasts. And then you get the sort of fizzy, bubbly, starty culture. Starty culture. Starty culture. That you can um, inoculate any kind of sweet tea or infusion or make yeah. ginger beer with. And it gives that, like, fermentation. So it's the base of every loads of things, basically, you need it. Well, it's the base. For me, it's the base of ginger beer and seasonal sodas. Mm -hmm. The thing that the way, because it's attracting wild yeast, it can... Be, it's not so controllable. Mm. This is the slight precarious thing for ginger bugs and, and what you make from it, but it's also the fun of it. But it requires attention. It, it's like having an animal. It's alive. You've got to feed it every day. And it's the same with the kombucha, the same with a lot of fermentation, is you are feeding bacteria and you have to nurture them. You have to kind of stay on top of them. The thing with the stuff we make, the ginger bugs, is it tends to be quite explosive. So unless you're burping the bottle each day, um, it's like making bombs. Wow. I know, it's very exciting. You've had ex some explosions recently. I had a huge explosion. <laughs> Five bottles burst burst in my fridge. The door came open with a lot of glass flying out. So, kids, <laughs> try this at home, but be safe. And that's a little bit too much. So, I'm going to just measure out 10 grams of ginger. Mm -hmm. Grate that into the jar. <clears throat> Two tablespoons of white sugar. Now, oftentimes people ask us within the kombucha and all of all of our ferments why we use white sugar. Um, it's more accessible to the yeast and it's more accessible to the bacteria to break down than brown sugars. Um, a lot of the time in the fermentation process, the, the sugars can disappear. I tend to let my ginger beers run till there's very little sugar. 
so that then I can add what I want later. So we've got two tablespoons of sugar, 10 grams of ginger, and 200 ml of water. Pop that in there. Give it a good old stir to get that sugar a little bit dissolved and not stuck on the bottom. And so, you put your cloth on top, and that is the beginning of a ginger bug. Wow. And it's really as simple as that. However, it does want to be taken care of. So day two, tomorrow, you would put another 10 grams of ginger and another two tablespoons of sugar and give that a stir. Sometimes you find that there's not enough wild yeasts in the house. So put it outside for a day, bring it in at night and keep on stirring it to try to attract the wild yeast into the mix. It should eventually, and we'll do a close up on this so you can hear the fizz, should eventually have this kind of sound. Exactly. Where is and you'll hear, like, you have a listen to it and you'll hear this and see more bubbles on top and then you know that it's actually alive. You want it kind of like, this one is maybe a day away from being ready, you want to see the bubbles and the kind of white froth appearing on top. Like if you're in a colder climate, where is good to leave it or does, it, does the heat matter? Um, before I was living in Amsterdam before, because the houses are all, you know, central heated, you have a regular temperature, it was actually quite easy to to regulate to, to, to make all the ferments because you could regulate the heat um, the only thing is is if you have enough wild yeasts in the in the house or in the garden or whatnot and that is just that can be variable from one house to the next okay yeah. wow so you don't really know not really it's a no. wild fermentation the thing that I have found that's actually quite interesting as well is this is the ginger bug but then I can also put turmeric in it as well mm. and that seems to take a lot quicker so you make five grams of each, five grams of uh, ginger, five grams of turmeric, and do the same process. <clears throat> so, we've made our bug. Imagine it's maybe, I'd say your bug will be active in about four days approximately. It doesn't seem to, people kind of give a rule to it, but it doesn't really work for me, these rules. It's just a matter of listening. Listen to the fears. Um, so once you've got your bug active, we're then going to start with our ginger beer. Um, ratios are very much dependent on how strong you want your, your how, how much ginger, how spicy you want it to be and how sweet you want it to be. I like a lot of ginger and not so sweet. Um, but today I'm going to do two litres of water. Um, at the moment I'm boiling one litre. I'm going to add 100 grams of ginger and 150 grams of sugar. So one litre of water boiling, 150 grams of sugar and 100 grams of ginger, which I'm going to grate and add to the water along with the sugar. Actually, let's put the sugar in first so that can actually dissolve. Yes. It can be a rough grate, it doesn't have to be like... So, once the sugar is all dissolved, we're ready to add our ginger. Pop that in there. Smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Ginger. And then we're going to let it simmer for... Uh, I kind of play with this, you know, it goes between... I probably go for half an hour to an hour and a half. Sometimes I leave it even longer. Um, and it just really extracts a lot of flavour. Um, that's a matter of trial and error. I think we're going to leave this one for an hour. Okay. Now we are going to make our ginger beer. So we've made our sugar ginger tea. We are going to strain that out. It's now cooled. So we let it cool out to make our sugar ginger tea. Strain that out. Add in juices of two lemon and, and the bug. 
just push that through. Does it have quite a strong taste at this point? Is it meant to be strong or as you like? It's as you like it. I like a really, like I really like my ginger beer quite spicy. Mm. Um, but yeah, that very much depends on, on personal preferences to sugar and spice, you know. So now we've got the ginger tea strained into there. Juice of two lemons is going in. I put the lemons in after it's um, cooled down as well so as not to kill all the benefits in the vitamin C in the lemon. In fact, I should probably straighten it. Okay. Give that a little stir up. And then we have our active ginger bun. Good old stir. Get it all active and nothing stuck to the bottom. And you know, oftentimes once you've got an active starter culture, ginger bug. I'd say you always leave a little bit um, so that you can continue, do like a continuous bug. Because mm. I've got three on the go at the moment, I'm just gonna put it all in. Bang! So the bug is what makes it react? The bug is, is what will give it its natural carbonation. Amazing. And then next up, put it, put it into that. And there we have it, the ginger, beginning of the ginger beer. So, the next thing we do, and then now we're just going to pop our cheesecloth or cloth on top um, for 24 hours. As and when you remember, the more often the better. Give it a good old stir because we're still attracting all those wild yeasts. And after 24 hours you should be able to hear that it's super fizzy and carbonated. And then you can bottle it. Amazing. Chug, chug. Then after you bottle it, I would leave it for 12 hours. Checking it every now and again, burping that baby so that it's not going to explode on you. It shouldn't, but <clears throat> not at the moment, not yet. Um, but yeah, burp it, and um, after 12 hours, pop it in the fridge, and then you're good to go. Again, these are things that need to be monitored even when they're in the fridge because they're wild fermentations, and um, you know. So let me get that right, 12 hours and then in the fridge, you don't put it in the fridge straight away. Yeah, so like this. Put cheesecloth over the top for 24 hours stirring, bottle it 12 hours outside, burping it to make sure it doesn't overcarbonate, and then in the fridge. Okay, so next up, and this is the thing that I'm really loving with the whole alchemy bar and blame with the cocktails, is making different tinctures and different aromas that you know, can completely change the, the taste experience of a cocktail. So I just find it fascinating. Um, we're going to make just a very simple tincture. It's pretty much using any herb that you've got. It can be rosemary, thyme, oregano, whatever you feel like making. Vodka in a jar. Put it in the jar and for about a week you just focus on it every now and again. Okay, it's not a bacteria, it's not a living thing. But it's still another thing that is taken care of. Um, and you shake it. I say let's go and collect some thyme from the garden. Yay! Well, you through the garden. So it's beautiful actually that the thyme's in flower right now. Um, usually I don't kind of take stuff from the plant when it's in flower just because I, I love it. But this time I have been a lot, which you'll see later when we I show you some decor that I've been making. Beautiful. And we just get a whole bunch of thyme. So just going to cut down the, the thyme to fit into the jar that we selected. We are avid jar collectors. We collect too many jars, <laughs> but are constantly using them. So it's just a, I like to re we'd like to reuse everything pretty much. Does it matter the size or? No, I mean basically you want to have some space in the top to shake. You know, this one is tiny. This one's not so little large. It doesn't really matter. But you know, like the bigger, I mean, 
you think about it, you're only going to be using like a few drops of this in a drink. Yeah, so the tinctures that I've made like keep me going for a really long time. I don't need to make masses of masses because it's not like I'm, I'm not selling it. I'm using it for, for my own sort of creation. So I prefer to make a little bit and then when I need more, make it fresh rather than have them very old and a lot of, yeah. That's again, up to you. And one more question. If it, could you use dried herb or is it better for Absolutely. It? Yeah. Dry, same process. Do you know what we've forgotten? Could you pass me the vodka, please? I can. So, we've got our tinctures in, our tinctures, our thyme, in the jar. And we're just gonna pour some vodka in there. And what's thyme good for? I heard it's good for certain ailments. I'd say, I mean, the, what I most commonly use thyme for is for uh, sore throats. So mm. thyme oil in a spoonful of honey, for example, thyme tea, just really helps with congestive um, issues and sore throats. That's that's my my main go-to for thyme. Wow. So it's and it goes really nice with whiskey. Yay. <laughs> healthy cocktail. <Yeah. laughs> um, so I would work on this for about a week, shaking it every day for about a week. You can try it beforehand and if you feel like you've got enough flavour extraction and you're happy with how it is, um, then you can always harvest it before. The one that I did, I put this in on Wednesday. I don't know how clearly you can see from there, but this is like already changed colour quite a lot. Um, and it's quite oh, concentrated wow. and we'll be using that later on today in our timely sours. Lovely. Lemongrass for the top of the timely, the timely sour. Mm. Because um, the timely sour is going to have lemongrass soda in it. But we'll talk about that when we stop making it. Lovely. So, what I have over here, we're going to make hibiscus syrup now. Um, simple, I've got 500 ml of water, 150 grams of sugar, and 20 grams of hibiscus. Um, like I said, this doesn't have to be your fixed recipe. You might decide for a litre of water in 150 grams or more hibiscus, depending on strengths that, that you want. It's all about experimentation, really. Um, but this is, this is my recipe. So pretty much, you're going to heat up the water, add in the sugar to dissolve, like bring the water to boiling. Um, and then afterwards we add our hibiscus, but not yet. Oh, okay. So, the, once the water's dissolved, which it has, mm -hmm. add in your hibiscus. And then I leave this to simmer for... People have different ideas with this. I leave it about an hour to simmer. You can see that the water's already starting to take on this beautiful pink colour. That goes to a really nice deep red and then you get the tartness of the hibiscus. I mean, you, I, I kind of taste it and check when I'm like, hmm, that's tart enough and not, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, then I'm ready to sort of strain it out. So we'll just leave that to simmer for a while. And um, I think it might be time for a cocktail. I hope so. Yeah, Let's we make some cocktails. Let's do that. It's cocktail time. It's nice, yeah. Um, so what's your equipment and everything that's quite useful for people to know at home if they're wanting to make them see those cocktails, I suppose? Sure. I mean, today we, two of the cocktails we're making, the Dark and Stormy and the Gold to Sunset, are both built cocktails, mm -hmm. meaning that you build it in the glass. So you don't need too much apparatus other than your jigger, your measuring cup, mm -hmm. and a spoon, okay. and your ice tongs. Lovely. But, you know, if you're at home, just do it at home, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then for the timely sour, we'll be using our Boston shaker and our Hawthorne strainer. Ooh. Hawthorne. But you don't need all of these, essentially, do you? You don't need. You could, I mean, really, instead of a Boston shaker and this, you could use a jar. Okay. You know, put a lid on it, shake it, I guess. I mean, yeah, I've never tried yeah. it like that, but I'm sure it, it could work. And then... Just use your tea strainer. That's a good idea. You know, 
Yeah. I mean, you kind of want it because you're you're working like we'll be working with egg whites for the Boston for the uh, time be sour. So just in case there's any like bits. globules yeah. that you don't want, yeah. yeah. So so we're gonna first of all we're gonna start with the dark and stormy. Okay. We're gonna use thirty five mil of rum in each. Because luckily, nobody has to drive today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, some people do free pours. I kind of like to measure it because that way, you know, you're always getting the same the same drink. So what are the measurements? This is 35 ml in each. Ah, okay. And any rum? That's, uh, I use dark rum. Okay. Dark and stormy. Yeah. Makes sense. And then... What's <laughs> the name? Dark. <laughs> Um, this is not commonly used in the Dark and Story, but I kind of like it because the ginger beer isn't as sweet. Um, and that's kind of, it, it takes a lot of, it relies a lot on the sweetness of the ginger beer, the Dark and Stormy, I think. Okay. Um, but because yeah. I let mine ferment a long time, um, I add in the sweetness and a little bit of orange pizzazz in so there. What's that quite this is Contra. Lovely. I love it. I was thinking a child for something. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. Maybe I'm like chocolate filled. Like, like a cherry's filled. chocolate or yeah. Terry's chocolate orange well, or something. that's what it is. Mm. Oh my God. That's just so like good already. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, I've not yet added the ice just simply because it's warm here and it's going to dilute really quickly. But I'm going to put it in now to just cool down the glasses a bit. It's nearly ready. So just a few cubes now. Um, I would only fill it up. This is all my home stuff, so they're quite small. You know what? Going straight on in there for the ham. I'm at home. I don't need to be. No, it's just me. Exactly. It just does. And you lot. And you <laughs> Whoever you are. <laughs> so. And then this is one we made earlier. Mm -hmm. Some ginger beer from over. Tiny little bit of carbonation coming out there. I just opened the bottle while that looks like. And so it's the, yeah, you put carbonation in a bit of fizz, right? Yeah. Lovely. And then just fill that up. Now some people do the rum on top of the the ginger beer. So they do ginger beer first and then the rum and then you've kind of got the, the sort of dark stormy oh, yeah. above, which kind of looks more theatrical than I didn't do it like that this time. Okay, but just you know, things to play with, yeah. And then we will just, if you could open that, I'm just going to do a little bit of a lime squeeze because just lime is just fabulous to bring out flavors to adding that little bit of sour. I just love lime. Can I tell you why? Do you, I give yeah, and let's decorate it with a bit of dehydrated it's orange. So you dehydrated these yourself, right? yeah. Amazing. What just on the top? Dump them on in. That's pretty. And um let's get a sauce of little flamingo straw. They look lighter than your normal dark and stormy actually, but I like The them. dark and stormy is that you're used to be making. I usually put kombucha in it as well. Ah, and this for the sake of this we're doing just just the ginger yeah. beer. Because it's but hard yeah. to get a hold of the kombucha as well. Mm. Wait one moment, Sorry. I can check if <laughs> Do you want to do it? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't know how popular it is in England, kombucha. Yeah. I think it's around, but yeah. Anyways, I mean, you've learned how to make the ginger beer, so it's kind of nice to just sort of really taste how that is, uh, at least for the first time. Totally. So, this is our first cocktail of the day. Just to wait until we're on number three. Like Cheers to Wow. Um, Gold Tooth Sunset. This. um. Beautiful bottle of vermouth. Oh, gorgeous. It's made uh, by a neighbour of ours here on the east of um, Ibiza. And she uses the bitter oranges that are at the end of the driveway, Amazing. just next to her house, which is so beautiful. It's so local and and lovely. And, um, and what is a vermouth? A vermouth is like a fortified wine infused with oh, herbs yeah. and spices and bitter orange as well. So this is actually her cocktail that she shared with me. And then I've done my own adaptation of it. Cool. Yeah. So we're going to do, so we're just going to do one part, one part. Well, maybe a bit more parts. Let's have a look at how much that looks like. And when you say one part, I'm being really dumb, but when you say one part, it's just one, like one, part, shot. one shot of the big one. I've done two now. Yeah. <laughs> we like it. I think <laughs> by the end of today. We'll be happy. Yeah. 
So start with vermouth. Yeah, super nice. And then the same with the carpet, equal amounts. <laughs> I would say two, two shots of carpet. Yeah, it's kind can of like equal parts. Or could you use Prosecco if you can't get carpet? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, here carvers are most common, like sort of sparkling. I hate us. I hate us. Really? Yeah. I hate that. It's been so long since I've tried Prosecco, I don't know if I know the it's difference. Really nice. it's it's really yeah. Nice. I think someone told me that Prosecco is like a forced carbonation. And whereas carver is actually natural carbonation, and that's you really taste the difference, you feel the difference, you feel more hungover when you drink prosecco compared to carver. <laughs> um, you've put your hibiscus syrup. Yes. Yeah, so this hibiscus syrup I also did, which we we've, we've all made together, but I did it with rose petals as well. Oh, wow! Just to well, give that extra floral color. kind of. Look at that color and the light. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Wow. And the thing with the rose petals, you need to take them out before, like they start to lose colour, you need to take them out before they change the whole colour into brown. Really? Yeah. So, so let's give that a try. this is what we've made, basically. This is what we've made, yeah. but without rose. Uh, so no, this is it. Simple but beautiful. Um, I think we could actually put some decoration in there. Yeah. Simple but beautiful. We've decided... <laughs> like a little bit of decor. <laughs> a little bit of decor, come on. We've opted on no ice. It's time cold because everything's super chilled, and because <clears throat> my ice tray is only so big. <laughs> and sorry, guys, I wasn't fully prepped with the ice, but you know, things... no, this is gorgeous. Cheers! Cheers! Just look how beautiful that looks. Look at that. And I think ice dilutes it anyway, so it's actually nice. Exactly. Yeah. That is. That's a journey in the mouth, isn't it? It is. Yeah. But also how much it changes from just the vermouth, but you get all the floral notes, don't you? Yeah. And you get the carbonation from the carver. Yeah. And then you've got this extra sort of tartness from the from the vermouth. Uh, sorry, from the hibiscus syrup. And the aroma is yeah. like really like almost like a jasmine. It is, isn't it? That's amazing. Mm. Mm. Wow, so good, good at this batch. Yes. <laughs> That's so good at drinking it. <laughs> So we've actually just thought of another aroma, sherbet. It smells like, gore, you know, like it reminds me of being a child and yeah. opening a packet of sherbet and yeah. getting that punch. Which is amazing just with those three combinations of, mm. of, of ingredients. Yeah, how much you can change it. Yeah. Because the taste is much, um, much more sour almost on the palate. Yeah. Journey. journey. It's a journey in the mouth. <laughs> But that's what I like about cocktail making. That's kind of the thing that I think inspires me most is I want to create journeys in the mouth. Yeah. That it's not, you know, that it, it it's keeps not just going. It back. You know, it starts from the smell. It's, well, it starts from the vision, the colour. You know, and then and then you smell and, and just that whole that whole experience. Yeah. To make it an experience. And it's quite it's making people be more mindful as well. It's the same as food. Like you just try and make people stop. Yeah. And really experience like savor the experience yeah. and then you you just get more pleasure from absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go yeah. savour this. Yeah. <laughs> Two cocktails later. Just fell in somewhat loose. What we're having now is the tiny sour. Lubricated. <laughs> oh I, I keep trying to use tools but I'm at home, whatever. Um so this is my version of a whiskey sour. I call it timely sour. This is um, basically one shot of whiskey, so like 35 ml of whiskey. What kind of whiskey have you used? Um, you can use any whiskey that you've got. Like, actually, people generally use bourbon. Okay, yeah. Usually. Um, I'm not such a bourbon to... fan, yeah. so I'm using whiskey. Fine. And I've just got Ballantines. 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 Um, yeah. So we're going to do. One shot of this, one shot of uh, lemon, so it's like one pot, one pot. And then rather than using simple syrup, um, um, I've made a sweet lemongrass tea. Then I let it cool down, inoculate it with a ginger bug. Okay. Then I do the same. I put it in an open jar with a cheesecloth on top. 
okay. leave it there, stirring it up, waiting for that carbonation, listening. Once that carbonation is there, once I hear those bubbles, I bottle it, leave it for 12 hours, the same as the ginger beer, and then you end up with a carbonated lemongrass soda. Wow. So okay. you could make a tea from rooibos, you could make a tea from uh, whatever herb or whatever tea yeah. you want to make, um, or fruit juices even, and then inoculate it with your ginger bug yeah. and make it a soda. Wow. So rather than using simple syrup, this has got the lemongrass soda, so it's a little bit of a carbonated uh, whiskey sour. Wow, nice. Uh, why we call it the timely whiskey sour is because yes. afterwards, like we made our thyme um, tincture, here's one I made earlier, <laughs> um, we're going to put a few drops of that in there. The thyme and the whiskey go really well together, and this just kind of changes the whole taste experience when you first of all smell this uh, this time. Yeah, this is actually Frigola, which is the local Ibiza yeah. time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just... You can use normal time. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely use normal time. Wow. So, so far we've put nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you've been explaining. Yeah. That's really interesting that you can use different teas to then make different sodas. Yeah. So that base of the bug is really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, again, I will press the fact that you need to stay on top of it, you know, don't just make a something, put it in the fridge and expect it to be okay. It needs nurturing and burping. I just don't want anyone to be explo have explosions <laughs> and that I'm to blame. So, <laughs> you might blame me. <laughs> so, we've done um, two shots of whiskey. In, uh, with ice. Yeah, with ice, yeah. Same with lemon juice. Oh, it's getting very full. So that's the lemon juice. That's squeeze. the lemon juice. Freshly squeeze the lemon juice from the tree. Lovely lemon tree. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like equal amounts of everything basically. Okay. It's like lemon, soda. whiskey, lemongrass soda. Lovely. And now egg. Egg white. Not from the chicken. No. <laughs> They, uh, to be honest, I'd love to eat my chicken's eggs. Yeah, fair enough. You don't want them like wasted. On yeah, them. I mean, I have done, but you know, you don't taste them as well. Wow, oh, that's a globulous, wow. globulous. So, what does the egg white do? It works as an emulsifier. It froths up the whole thing. Okay. Do you like to eat raw yolk? Yeah. <laughs> Drunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a couple of drinks later, and she's like, oh. This doesn't work. Let's see, I'm scared I'm going to get this all over me. Stand back, Dexter. Hear it and feel it. You can feel it get thicker. Oh, wow. You, 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 can, you can hear it, yeah. It's, it sounds heavier. Yeah, it is heavier. It sounds, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so there's loads of like froth. Frothy! Yeah. And then I have candied. This is what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So how did you make these? So these are candied thyme flowers. Basically, what I did is um, froth up some egg white, put a couple of drops of vodka with it, so that, and then paint with a paintbrush onto the flower. Wow. And the vodka being that it, it would dry. Um, quicker. The egg white will dry quicker. And then um, put icing sugar over the top while it's still wet and then allow 36 to 48 hours for it to dry. 
Beautiful. And can you eat them? Let's see. I mean, time flowers are definitely edible. <laughs> so this is Frigola tincture. I've done like five. It doesn't really matter, really. You can play around with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a whole different thing now. Cheers, pop it. I was going to put it in, say Keynes, put it in my mouth. You don't really taste the whiskey. No, you don't. That's really surprising. I know. Whiskey normally dominates. So. I know. I mean, even Phil like putting a bit more in, but hey. <laughs> no, I think it's perfect. Like this is such a clean. It's so different from the sherbetty one. It's so yeah. clean and like Fre fresh, fresh and uplifting, and the time gives this sort of. You really feel like. And you can taste like a, as an aftertaste, the lemongrass mm. from the soda. Yeah, That's like going. a follow-up flavour, isn't it? You know what? I mean, I don't know if I'm being super sensitive to it, but it almost smells like meringue. Oh, yeah? Like, I can almost smell that lovely... Maybe it's because it's reminding me of when you make meringues or something. There's something really beautiful with that light sweetness and then going into all the deep, sharp flavour. Yeah, and the emulsion in it is like that thickness mm. of the cocktail that just... There's something kind of filling about it yeah, as well. Yeah, it rounds off yeah. all the flavour. Yeah. Um, I run the pop-up bar called the Alchemy Bar. This so it appears at different events and locations and all sorts of random places over the island. So if in the future you're over here and we're all allowed to go out and gather, you can always look me up to come and make cocktails for you. Um, but also just to give you a little visual on... I'm going to come closer. Yeah, I like that. A little visual on um, Los Fermentistas. Does that work? It's our kombucha and our jan. And can you see our lady with her mouth covered? As I said, slightly on point. Um, so yeah, this is this is our this is our passion project. This is what we do. This is what we love. Oh, thank you so much for sharing your house and for sharing your ideas and all the things you make, which are fabulous. It's been a pleasure. I Yay. hope you all come again. Yay, come to Ibiza. <laughs> Super nice. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be part.